Amos chapter 3 verse 7 Surely the Lord God will do nothing but he revealed his secrets unto his servants the prophets after the Lord's prayer and never still never I'll be back for this edition of more my life here in the Bible Base Network <music>
that haven of rest. Shelter me safe in that haven of Heavenly Father, at 30 minutes past the hour, if there's ever time we need to draw more nearer and still nearer to you, it's in days like these. The world is rapidly falling apart and men are confused where to go, where to turn to. Should I turn to the government? Should I turn to my brothers and sisters? Should I turn to my friends, my colleagues? Who should I turn to? as the world head downhill on a fast, rapid pace. Everyone is baffled. 
from world leaders to people on the street, down the corner, around the block, they're all confused. Where do we go for rescue? But this morning, Father, I pray you will share something with us to let us know the rescue is in the rescue saving person is still alive. His name is Jesus. And the time has come for us to turn to him with all of our hearts and with all of our might and all our strength and stop looking to mind to solve our problems, but they can't, says the Bible. So this morning, Father, give us your spirit. Give us an attentive ear and a spirit of discernment that we'll know where to go in this time of earth's history. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, friends. It's October the 30th, 2012. And at this hour, they say it's about 7 degrees outside our studio. And our scripture text came from that prophet once again this morning, Amos. We dealt with Amos on yesterday. Amos told us on yesterday that the time will come and be a farmer in the land. Over there, no Amos 8, verse 11, but today he's going to tell us that surely our Lord God will do nothing but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. That's in Amos 3, 7. The question, my friend, do we believe it? That our God is surely, surely, surely on our side. And he would do nothing, zero, zip. But he revealed this secret unto his servants, the prophets. In fact, in Remus 3 3, the prophet wrote this Can two walk together except they be agreed? In other words, my friend, if you're not on the Lord's side, the Lord cannot help you. But if you're walking with Jesus, like a hand that fits into a glove, surely, my friend, our God will do nothing but reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. A storm is coming. And I wonder, my friend, are you ready for the storm? No, not Sandy, that reap havoc from way back down in the south came straight up, traveling not. And men are still reeling from that storm. Did you watch the news on last night? It was such a sad newscast, like they always are many times over. Our friends within in Freeport are devastated once again. They're, they've been whiplash once again. Two deaths recorded in the Bahamas, as far as I know, stand to be corrected. Many deaths in America, millions are without lights this morning and water. Like we were a few days ago, and everyone called the talk show, when is my light coming back on? I need my phone on. I need my internet on now. But there's a storm coming. And it ain't named Sandy. Nor Francis. Nor Larry or whatever these storms are named. A storm is coming. My friend, I wonder if you're ready. You see in verse 6 of Amos 3, Amos said this. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people be not afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord had not done it? And then he says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing but reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Or yes, if you also read a little bit from Abaka. One of the government and those in responsible position to be careful how they distribute rum licenses. But in yesterday I was going over that Abaka, you know, in my spare time, and I was drawn to Abaka chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. And as much as you have your Bible, we're going to scroll there for just, we're going to spend just a little bit of time there. And I wonder if you can see any parallel between the prophet Abaka and us today. That's Abaka chapter 1, is in the Old Testament. Not a common book read in most churches today on many homes. But Abaka had something very important to say in the first few verses of Abaka chapter 1. You should be there by now at 18 minutes past the hour. And if you listen to this program today, amen, my friend, it's live. If you're listening in the p.m., that's as far as 4 o'clock this afternoon, it's going to be played back just for you in case you missed it. And if you're driving down the street you're from my exercising class and 
on the beach or around the park. Spend a little time here in the morning, man, of your friend, your, your dear friend, Brother Paul. Amen. They think I'm crazy. Yes, I'm crazy for Jesus. My friends could tell you, when I was for the devil, I was crazy for him too. I went way out, my friend, all out for the devil. And now I'm going all out for Jesus. Oh, that's, that's a fanatic. That, that boy here ain't good. The church censored him. Don't listen to him. But let's see what a back have to say. Well, he's dead now, back. He's sleeping in the dust. And it starts with the burden which a baka, the prophet, did see. He had a burden. Do you have a burden this morning for your friends? Or are you more burdened now with your bill that you mustered up? A burden for your children. A burden for how you're going to pay your house note tomorrow. Well, uh, well Baka had a burden too. And, and he saw it coming. And he cried to the old Lord. How long should I cry? And thou will not hear. That's not a good thing. You're crying to the Lord and you wonder if he's hearing you. But Habakkuk found himself in this dilemma over 3,000 years ago. And he cried to the Lord. He said, Lord, will thou hear? Will thou not hear? And then Habakkuk said, even cry out unto thee of violence. And thou will not say. This is not good. Then Abaka cried out some more. Abaka said, Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievances? Why, Lord? And before Lord had the answer, Abaka started talking again. Abaka said, For the spoiling and violence are before me. And there are rays of strife and contention. Therefore, Lord, the law, the Lord, the law of God is slacked. And judgment did never go, go, go forward. For the wicked to come pass about the righteous, Lord. Therefore, wrong judgment proceeded, Lord. Behold ye among the heathens and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, to be told you. Then the Lord said, For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall mar through the bread of the land, and proceed the dwelling place that not theirs that is not theirs they are terrible and dreadful says the Lord God their judgment and their dignity shall proceed from thyself their horses are also a swifter are swifter than leopards and are more fierce than even the wolves their horsemen should spread themselves and, and their horsemen shall come from far and they shall fly as eagles that hasten to eat. And they shall come all the violence, says the Lord God. Their faces shall smurn up as the east wind, as the east wind and they shall gather the captivity of the, as the sand. So Habakkuk cried, Oh Lord, well, why are you allowing me to see these things? But you know, the Lord has allowed us to see some things also for those who call ourselves Christians. And it don't move us an unks. We're so wrapped up in self. If our self is the enemy, Therefore, my friend, victory is sure oneself is surrendered to God.
A storm is coming. And we're not ready, my friend, for the storm. We're not even trying to get ready for the storm. I know, people, my friend, when you do try to get ready, Amos 8.11 will be yours to keep. As I repeat from yesterday's scripture text, The day shall come, says the Lord God. Behold, it will come, that your Lord God, your save the world, shall send a famine in the land. Not a famine for bread, nor thirst for water, but for hearing the words of the Lord. But we've been so busy. And we wander from people to people looking for it. We shall not find it, says the Lord God. Because we're too busy. Chasing the dream. Listening to the wrong voices. And walking to the beat of a different drama. You know, it was over a hundred years ago. In a book called Christian Service, under the chapter, The Worst Condition Facing the Christian Worker. Now the prophetess by the name of Valentine Wright wrote these words on page 52, paragraph 1. Under the caption, Restraining Spirit of God Being Withdrawn. The what? The Restraining Spirit of God is being withdrawn. And I quote, the restraining spirit of God is now being withdrawn from the world. Hurricanes, storms, tempests, fire and flood, disaster by sea and land follow each other in quick succession. Full stop. Should I read that again? The restraining spirit of God is now not tomorrow, but right now as I speak, being withdrawn from the world. And as a result, hurricanes, storms, tempests, fire and flood, disaster by sea and land, follow each other in quick succession. Full stop. The prophet wrote that scientists seek to explain all these things, but they have no answers. We can send men to the moon and send unmanned spaceship to Mars, but we can't stop the hurricanes, the storm, the tempest, and the floods, and the fire. How come? What are these signs telling us? I'm glad you asked, my friend, for the Lord has an answer to his prophetess. Listen carefully. The signs ticking around us tell of the near approach of the Son of God are attributes to any other than the true cause. Men cannot design the sentinel angels restraining the four winds that they should not blow until the servants of God are sealing their foreheads. But when God should bid his angels to loose the winds, my friend, there shall be such a sense of strife and commotion that no pen or picture will be able to describe. Did you get it? The prophetess wrote, my friend, that there are four angels standing on the four corners of the corner of Revelation chapter 7. And the hurricanes, and the storms, and the tempests, and the fires, and floods, and the disaster by land and sea are a joke. The world will take place when those men are let go, my friend. No pen to be able to describe it. No picture to be able to describe it. It's going to be for so much of a great magnitude. It'll be everyone for themselves. But while these things are taking place, men are living luxurious lives, searching the internet for their next, next private jet, checking to pay for their next home on the boulevard, looking to see for the best sale for the car by the car lot, searching the paper so they could buy a prostitute, Male and female. While winds and storms and tempests and fires are telling us, the coming Lord is just around the corner. For the storm is coming. Who cares about a storm? Freeport got hit. Cat Island got hit. Long Island got hit. Ragged Island got hit. But we didn't get hit. We are right, God. But our light is off. Can you please turn our light on now, Mr. Beasley? 
Mr. Cable Arms, can you please turn our cable on right now? We need to on right now. It's a sense, my friend, that the Spirit of God is being withdrawn from there, just like Jesus said it would. You remember when Jesus walked by this way 2,000 years ago? He said, As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. What was it like in the days of Noah, by the way? Have you read the story lately over there in Genesis? That one of the key elements, and one of the most important elements the earth has ever received as a gift since Christ left, is known as the Holy Ghost. Or oh, you thought it was your car. Or oh, you thought it was your house on the boulevard. You thought it was your 10 acre lot. Or oh, you thought it was your bank account. No, my friend, one of the best elements that ever touched down on this planet after Christ left, his name is the Holy Ghost. Have you seen him lately? The Holy Ghost. In fact, this is the one the Bible says if you play around with, you'll be blaspheming. Your sins should not be forgiven. My sins should not be forgiven. But who cares about the Holy Ghost? He just gets up in your business. Tell you what to do, what not to do. Tell you what to eat, what not to eat. Tell you what to dress, how not to dress. We retired him. Can you please go away, Mr. Holy Ghost? And the Holy Ghost shows back, no problem. One day, I'm going to be gone. And when I leave the earth, it will not be business usual around this place. For when I leave, there will be no conviction of sin. No conviction of judgment and righteousness when I leave. So you don't have to worry. One day I would get up and get out of here. And I can see who you can cry to then. And that's the day my friend read Proverbs chapter 1 will be fulfilled. What Jesus told us in Genesis. He told Noah, Noah, this people has waxed worse. They're getting worse and worse now. I'm going to wipe them out now. Build me a boat. Here's the measurements for that boat now. One door, one window now. And now went down to the lumber company, my friend. And bought a supply of equipment. And wood and nail and, and saw and hammer. And he went to work. Because he believed the word of the Lord. Because Noah was the only person that God found grace in. Grace found, Noah found grace in the, in the eyes of the Lord. It says Genesis 6 7, Genesis 6 8. God said, I saw Noah that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And there's every mind of thought of his heart only evil continuously. Genesis 6 5. And the Lord said, No, because of this, my spirit will not always strive with man. For of his flesh, no, his days should be 120 years. Genesis 6 3. What was the problem? Well, they start having sexual orgy, says the Bible. They look at the daughters on the other side and they saw it was fair and sweet and spankadocious. When God told them, Do not mix with the mixed multitude. And they rejected the word of the Lord. And as a result, God rejected them. And now preached his heart out. For 120 years. Every time he strike a nail, he was preaching. Every time he saw a piece of wood, he was preaching. And finally, one day the Lord said, No, it's time. Get the up here, Noah, and get into the yard. For only the up found faithful. And after no revival is over, my friend, it wasn't 400 people. It was only seven. He, his wife, his three sons, and their three daughters. Now, in most campaigns, if you get only seven souls, you'll be greatly upset, would you not? See, God's not concerned about the number. He is concerned about, are you really real for me? Well, we get excited when we see over 400 people get baptized, but not God, my friend. He only gets excited when you've come to the point where you're to die, to understand that's what gets God's excited. He only gets excited when you want to sell all for the gospel. That's what gets God's excited. Imagine it. The King of Kings came down to this earth 2,000 years ago, left the splendor of glory, gold everywhere, and came down here, couldn't even find a hotel to sleep in, to be born. And we get meals on our table, so much we throw them in the garbage, the meals. 
We got everything. Light, water, internet, phone. We got everything. One day Jesus wanted to go for a ride. He had no money to buy no car. He had to borrow someone's donkey. He didn't go by the local dealership. Because he had no money. One time was the disciples had a bill to pay. And they were so broke. Just said, if you go over there looking at the fish mouth, just over there in the fish mouth. So broke was our Savior that when he died, he even had a tomb to lay in. He had to borrow someone's tomb. And he didn't know because he was dead. Then one day, one of the disciples wanted to go on a journey. He said, you sure you want to come with me, son? Because be it known this day that the foxes have holes, the birds have their nests, but the Son of Man who you want to follow, I have no way to lay his head. Imagine that. The Savior of the world. Royalty at his best. Walk among us. And how should we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? But all we're concerned about is our paycheck. How much am I going to get paid, God? One day God hired a group of people in the parable told. Hired, hired a few people. They didn't want to work for him. And he agreed, to pay, he agreed to pay all the same amount of money. And a few of them showed up late for work. And said God the same for those who showed up early for work. And those who showed up early got mad with those who showed up late. How dare you, Jesus, pay them the same as us? You know, those type of people is not going to make it in heaven. Because when you're crowned up a thousand stars and there's only have two, oh, what's the deal, God? Are you calling favor here? How come they have a thousand stars in their crowns and I only have two in mine? Something wrong with you. See, those type of people are not going to make it. Everyone that makes it in heaven will be satisfied with what God gives them. And guess what they're being satisfied right here and now? This way the satisfying ship list is being made up. Not in heaven, on planet Earth. And there's a storm coming. And there, as I tell you, my friend, we're living in a solemn and important. Very solemn. In fact, the only time solemn some, sometimes hits some of us, and I did say sometime, is when someone close to us die, then we get all solemn and sober. Sometimes that don't even move us. But then let's go out to the days that we're living in are solemn and very important. Whether you want to believe it or not, the Spirit of God is with being withdrawn from the earth. And as we up in front, plagues and judgments are already falling upon the earth. And they're forecasting, my friend, of the greatest magnitude that our Savior is coming. Our news last night also was our union friends telling BTC you best get with it Mr. BTC if not we should deal with you without mercy you know we told about that inspiration as well that one of, one of the agencies the devil is going to use to bring chaos in the world are unions see when I watch the news I don't watch the news like you watch the news I have the news in one eye and I got my spiritual discernment in the other eye my friend the news in one ear and my spirit is in the other ear. But the part is we're not studying the prophecies. So when we see these things, oh, why be them union people? Oh, they got plenty of power, my friend. Says God, the unions have plenty of power, my friend. They can shut the world down. In fact, the news last night, you heard it. If we have to go across the world, across the water, get more combining forces, we will do that, says one union agent. Did you hear that? And I said, just look at that. Surely the Lord God do nothing, my son, unless I read it to you first, my son. That these unions are combining their forcing, forces. And those who don't join with these unions become marked men, says the Lord God. But yet they are God people in unions. Thinking they are marching to Zion. But you ain't marching nowhere, my friend. We're going to tell you this. The time is near at hand. When there be sorrows in the world that no human balm can heal. 
Right now, the government is in big problem. Just a few days on news, we have great, we have great hopes for Freeport. We, we're gonna see what we can do to bring some investors, and then we're gonna see if, if Freeport can bounce back. Oh, lo and behold, when they went to touchdown, and yes, they did the touchdown in West End. The main airport shut down, flooded by water once again. I saw Grandma last night crying on the Prime Minister's shoulder. Distraught, lose the house. Her husband in retirement, her hearts go to them. Grandma, if you listen this morning, you haven't seen nothing yet. Grandpa, they wouldn't have been my, my grandparents, that's why I'm saying that. You haven't seen nothing yet, Grandpa. I saw the young couple who has been the husband, the wife, of, the wife, his wife, a teacher, talking about their destructiveness in their house. They tried to elevate their furniture, but still the water came and sweep them all away. Remember this, my friend. The time is near at hand when the sorrows that will wreak havoc in this world, no human bomb, no human problems can be able to heal it. The Spirit of God is being withdrawn from the earth. And you would think that God would stare it away. What lesson is God trying to teach us here? Could, could he have stared it away from Freeport? Sure he could. But for some reason he chose not to spare it away. The young man said, this is not the first time, this is not the second time, this is the fourth or fifth time this happened by our way. That we lose everything. Why God? Why, why are you keep letting it go? Are we learning lessons? Or as soon as we get money to buy the stuff back, we go back into our spiritual slumber and our spiritual slothfulness. God is trying to teach a lesson here. And I wonder if we learn anything. Could it be we are stand guilty of what the Lord wrote to his prophetess? The world is a pest house, written over a hundred years ago. Listen to these words. Men in their blindness boast of wonderful progress and enlightenment. But the heavenly watchers see the world filled with corruption and violence. Because of the sin of atmosphere, because of sin, the atmosphere of our world has become the atmosphere of a penthouse. Of a pest house. Can I repeat that for us? Over a hundred years ago, the Lord told the prophet to write these words. Men in their blindness boast of wonderful progress and enlightenment. But the heavenly watchers see the earth filled with corruption and violence. Can you see it? Can you see what the heavenly watchers can see? The earth full of corruption and violence. And the prophet write these words. Because of sin, transgression of God's law, the atmosphere of our world has become the atmosphere of a pest house. End of quote. True or false statement? Is that a lie, my friend? What does that word pass out mean anyway? Is there, a, is there a smaller word for that word pass out? Then this prophet is something else. Only had a third grade education, you know. And come up with these words that drives you to your dictionary. So the word is becoming as a pass out, my friend. Full with pass. Not the ones that eat our house like termites. No, no, no. Not the rats. A pass out of sin. A cesspool of sin we are swimming in. But who cares about that? I'm living good over here. They're living good over there. The storm didn't come by our way. I heard some people call it call the talk show. Man, I'm so happy my light never been off. The hurricane just like an evening pass our way. Child, I live over here. I'm so glad our light don't ever go off in hurricane pass. Our pass house. 
a house or a hospital of persons infected with disease. And what is a house infected with? A human house? Disease of sin and corruption and violence. Our hearts are so evil continuously because he's about to wipe us out lest we repent. And that, that's what a hell, a prepared house represents. A hospital, my friend. And this world is a hospital. And the act is eyes inhabitants. But do check in for God. And each of us, my friend, is going to give an account for the part we are. And this big talk, we're we'll going to name the, the, the bridge after one of the world's greatest black actors. His name is Sidney Poitier. He acted, he acted on the world stage real good. But there's another acting taken on. And the star witness is you and I. And we're about to receive a Grammy Award from Jesus. Not from Hollywood. But to receive my friend, we need to be sin free. No sin. No blunders. So, Mr. Prime Minister, if you're listening this morning, hear this. The condition of things in this world so show that troublous times that you've never seen before, sir, is just upon us. When you read the daily newspaper, sir, it's full of indication of terrible conflict, is it not? Bold robberies are frequent occurrence, sir, is it not? Strikes and commotions, sir, is a frequent occurrence, is it not, sir? Thefts and murders, Mr. Commissioner, are committed on every hand, is it not, sir? Men possessed by demons, sir, taking the lives of other men and women, even little children. And the sad reality, sir, pastors and bishops and people alike, you know it all too well that we have become infatuated, infatuated with vice, and every species of evil is prevailing around us. But God is speaking. Is anyone listening? For a time will come, my friend, he will not he will not be listening. Are you sure, Brother Paul? I'm very sure. Let's go with your Bible to Proverbs chapter one. Where the Bible says God will laugh at us one day if we keep running from him. If we keep wanting to do our own thing. But why would he laugh? Let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter one, verse twenty three. Let's read into the record this morning why God will laugh at us. You mean God will laugh? Yes, yes, says the Bible. He laugh. You listen to the lion preachers. This is your year. This is your best year ever. Just so you see it over here and so you see it over there, and God will bless you. Just liars. See how by how God tell us that He reigns just on the blessing of the just and the unjust. You don't have to serve God to get some blessing. You'll still get your blessing. Our God is love, period, full stop. You could curse him right now and you would not die most likely. But our God is love. You can't buy God out, my friend. That's what I love about our God. If you go rise and dies, no problem. God still loves you. And he will still feed you and bless you and clothe you. That's God, my friend. Not man, though. They'll cut you down for every time unless you're on their side. I mean, just living for Jesus, they'll cut you down and trample underfoot. They'll try to kill you just trying to live for Jesus. Imagine if you try to live for something else. So Jesus, speaking through his prophet Solomon, the wisest man they said had ever lived. Well, then Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23. And what the first word is? Turn. But if you don't want to turn, now God says, just don't turn in anything, but turn you at my reproof. Not at your husband's reproof, not at your wife's reproof, not at your pastor's reproof, or the church reproof, or Brother Paul's reproof, but turn you at my reproof. Turn you at my counsel, says the Lord God. At my counsel, personal. Not our counsel, but my counsel. Behold, he said. I will pour out my spirit upon you, says the Lord God. 
I will make known unto you my word, says the Lord God. But we have to turn at God's reproof. And behold, he said, I will, not might, I will pour my spirit upon you. And I will make known unto you my word, says the Lord God. Like surely the Lord God will do nothing, says Amos 3, 7. Here again he tells us the exact same thing, only in a different way. That if you turn at my reproof, says the Lord God, and behold, I will pour my spirit upon you, says the Lord God, I will make known unto you my words. But the problem is we won't turn. And then from this point it goes downhill. Once we reject verse 23, God says, because I have called, hello, over there. Because I knock, hello, over there. And you refuse to answer the knock. And you refuse to answer the call. And now after Jesus finishes, finish, get tired of calling, my friend. He stretches hands out to us. He called, he stretched out his hand, and then Jesus says, and no man regarded it. Wow. Let's not run past that. Are you there? Proverbs 124. And you're on the bus, my friend, you're taking metal notes. You're still parked outside the house. Don't go in the house yet. God is speaking to you. He's speaking to me. He's speaking to the whole world, the whole inhabitants. Because I have called, says the Lord God. And we refuse, says the Lord God. I have stretched my hand to you, says the Lord God. And no man regard it. And I make marvelous words, God say, But you, said not, you had said not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. Says I what? All my counsel. How is that possible? We see the Bible puts it this way. To the book of James, chapter 2. If you break one of the commandments, you've broken what? Oh. So just one you need to break. And God said, by breaking that one, you set aside all my counsel, every piece. That's how you do it, my friend. You've set it aside, says the Lord God. And you would not have my reproof, says the Lord God. And as a result, he tells Solomon right these words. I, God, will also laugh at your calamities. <laughs> says God. Laughing, my friend. At you and I, because we want none of his reproof. We want none of his counsel. He laughs, my friend. <laughs> he laughs with us, my friend. That's you and I, my friend. God does that play. And then God says, I will mock. Imagine that. Because I will mock when you are coming. Imagine God mocking us, my friend. Can you imagine that? I can't. That God laughing and mocking? Does it come in an instant? No, it comes over years of rejecting God's counsel. This does not happen in a day. After all, did he not say, forgive your fellow man 70 times 7? If he tells you must forgive your fellow man 70 times 7, you think God is going to give us up on one shot? How oh, God don't work that way? Is after years of calling and knocking, years of calling and knocking, and years of searching for us, that when he's done everything he possibly can, then he says, I will laugh. I will mock. But it gets worse. In verse 27. And when your fear comes as a desolation, says the Lord God, and your destruction comes as a whirlwind, your hurricanes, your tornadoes, your tempests, you see erosion of the, of the earth? Or when disaster and anguish come upon you, says the Lord God, then <laughs> you call for your prayer meeting, but I will not answer. Then will you seek me early, but you shall not find me, says the Lord God. Now something here don't sound right. God is love, is it not? This is a strong language, God. You're sure you're not out of order here, God? God's not out of order. Just keep reading. Not at all. For God said knowledge came and we hated it. Verse 29 of Proverbs 1. 
For they, you and I, hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord your God, our God. And God repeats himself because they want none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat, you and I shall eat, God forbid, the fruit of our own way and be filled with our own devices. This is tough stuff. For the turn away of the simple shall they slay them. And the prosperity of the fools shall destroy them. But, oh, this is a positive but. Are you ready for this but? It's a sweet positive but. Listen to God. See, I love God. But, whosoever hearken unto me shall dwell safely. And she be quiet from the fear of evil. Isn't God sweet? But the sweetness does not wipe out 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26. Or Proverbs chapter 1. So God said, turn you in my reproof. And behold, I pour my spirit upon you. I put my words into you. But whosoever hearken me shall do us safely. I shall be quiet from the fear of evil. This morning, my friend, I give you Jesus. A storm is coming. And so, my friend, very soon, the sound, the trumpet, will be sounded. Are you ready for it? With the sound of trumpet announcing from the sky, Jesus is coming from heaven on high. See now the heavenly gates are open. Christ is passing, passing through them. All the universe is watching as a king, our savior king descends to take us home. With the sound of trumpets, triumphant is the sound. Jesus is coming to right every wrong. Climax of history. Sound of trumpets in regal majesty. Jesus, Jesus is coming to triumph and is he. And in his glorious trains of millions, saints and angels, heaven's armies. Oh, how awesome is the great and grand display of power invincible of Christ our Lord. By his very brightness, his enemies are slain, and all earth's kingdoms are now in his domain. Jesus is coming, is coming to reign. With the sound of trumpets, the sound of mighty trumpets. Sound of Trump, Heavenly Father, we pause this moment thanking you that the trumpet has not sounded as yet. For if it did, Father, many of us would have not been ready. But in this quiet hour, Father, give us an opportunity to reflect and go back and see if you're following your counsel and no other. The hour is late, Father, and we're not ready. Help us, Father, you're not coming for those who are getting ready, but those who are ready. We played the game when we were younger, hide and seek. 
Have we been hiding from you? You've been seeking. And finally you caught up with us. And he said, gotcha. But many of us don't like that word. So we try to slip off the other side. But Father, help us not to get away this time. Be on our case, Father, until we yield to you. Because we realize, Father, it be all too sad that if we step away from you this time, we just might not be able to step back. For every time we resist your call, Father, it gets more harder and harder and harder to receive you. That's a fact. So today, Father, if there's any of us that hear your call today, help us not to harden our hearts. Today will be this day, that day, that we'll surrender all to you. Bless us today. Bless us individually. And then bless our extended family. And then bless the world over, Father, you are like you always done. But let this blessing want to be one that let us know that, that you in the blessing business for us individually. Be our governments under great distress. Let them know, Father, they haven't seen nothing yet. Our commission reads, great distress. Let them know, let them know, Father, he hasn't seen anything yet. It's gonna get worse, says the Bible. But the good news is, Father, let them know. That once we are entangled with you, we are safe. Even if we must lose our lives, we are still safe. Because one day, Father, the resurrection of life will make us appearance. And all those who are dead in Christ shall rise first, praise God. So death to the sinner is tragedy. But to the saint, it's sweet. Because we only can sleep for a moment. And next time we arise, we shall be in your presence, praise God. So bless us today. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. And when it's time, it should be no more. We pray that we will not be found wanting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friend, if you care to call us for any which reason, number to call it be 322-6273. The number once again, that's 322-6273. If you listen in America, you can call us for any which reason. The number will call be 516-821-8443. That's 516, U.S. listeners. It will record 516-821-8443. If you want to send us a text message, it's 242-357-8244. That's 242-357-8244. 8244 for us to receive your text messages. You want to send us electronic mail? It's info at bbn1023fm.com. That's info at bbn1023fm.com to send us an electronic mail. You want to send us in the way our mailbox is bbn1023fm, PO Box N8993, Nassau, Bahamas. That's bbn1023fm, PO Box N8993, Nassau, Bahamas. Once again, this morning, we'd like to thank the Heavenly Host for continuing to work with us and through us. That's God the Father. That's God the Son. That's God the Holy Spirit and our ministry and angels. They've made this program all possible, my friend. It's, they are the producers of this program. We just happen to be the little dirty old agents that they're working through. Praise God. Imagine that God will work through, through you and through me. Dirty old us, my friend. Can you imagine that God will trust us with His Word? Can He trust you, my friend? Can He trust me? Let's surrender ourselves to Him and lead the results with Him. And He will do what He has promised that He will do. And for those who cannot stream us live over the radio, we are streaming live on the internet at www.tprb1023fm.com. That's www.tprb1023fm.com and www.bbn1023fm.com as well. That's wwwbbn 1023fm.com will stream live there as well. This is the Bible Based Network, a service of Turning Point Ready Bahamas, where our logo is to bring the world closer through the spoken word. The station we have dubbed God's Radio Station, called to the kingdom for such a time is down here in the ghetto in Peter Street, right off East Street. Stop by, give us a visit sometime, amen. Yeah, Peter Street, you heard it right. Right off East Street, you know, the, the ghetto that you grew up in before you went out west out east. He'll be right down here in Peter Street. Right off East Street, it's a one way street. Stop by here sometime. We'll be happy to meet you. So until then, my friend, or oh, until tonight at 7, this is a Tuesday night. This is a Tuesday morning going into a Tuesday night. We will meet, me and my friends, discuss topics of most importance to you. Do you know 
Many of our pastors have been taught lies in the colleges and they're not teaching it to us. Yeah, that, that's a fact. Genesis will be talking more about it. Rachel on this network, the Bible based network, God willing, that's this afternoon at 7 p.m. on this network. The program dub an evening with your Bible. Our topic of discussion this is a new theology. Have you heard about it? If you have, my friend, stop by this afternoon and spend some time with us. And listen to what is being taught in your local church, in many local churches around here. And the devil is trying to deceive us. But we thank God there are still honest ministers among us, my friend, who will give us inside information on how they were trained in colleges. They rejected it, and now they share it with us. Let us know we should be aware of it. And when it's stopped by our way, we should rebuke it in love. Amen? So it's here, the new, the new theology. You need to know about it. That's the night at 7. And every Friday night, we meet you as well at 8 o'clock. Discussing the uh, topic of discussion along those same lines. Be a part of it. We'll see you tonight. Or we'll hear from you tonight. Or you'll hear from us tonight. At same on this network called the Bible Base Network. Once again, we thank all of you for your prayers, your financial support, your words of encouragement, your rebukes. We thank you all. Amen. So until then, my friend, do take care. This is your dear friend, Brother Paul. Like always, my friend, love you much. Bye now. <laughs>